I'm not a gambler, but I can, I can bet that uh, <clears throat> we have the same mutual hobby. I bet that you like to do this activity just as much as I do, perhaps if not more if you're real diehard about it. What if I told you that this mutual hobby of ours has been researched and directly correlated to success? You guys interested? You guys puzzled? This hobby is sleep. And now we're all college students, so I think it's, fair, it's safe to say that all of us pretty much love sleep. Um, but statistically, one out of four of us in this room does not get enough of it. So sucks to suck if you're that guy, I'm sorry. But <clears throat> um, sleep has been proven to be a major key to success. It's been, <clears throat> it's been proven to negatively affect your GPA, and it can uh, postpone, you postpone <clears throat> your semesters and that kind of stuff. You could sleep your way to graduation, sleep your way to a, a successful semester, and you can sleep your way to 60K. So <clears throat> what if you're not that one out of four? Uh, what, if, what if that person next to you is the person that's exhausted and, and doesn't get enough sleep? Not, no skin off your nose, right? Exactly. But what if, uh, <coughs> excuse me, but what if come finals week you could be an extra on the scene of The Walking Dead? You're a walking zombie, not enough sleep, you're grouchy, all that kind of stuff. Well, keep, me, keep this in mind. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Keep this in mind. 27% of students surveyed by Dr. Galtney at UNC Charlotte was found to be at risk for sleep disorders. <clears throat> and those who were at risk of sleep disorders were much more significantly at risk to uh, academic failure. <clears throat> so when I'm talking about sleep disorders, I'm not talking about CPAP machines and sleep apnea. I'm talking about things like insomnia, narcolepsy, uh, RLS, uh, circadian rhythm disorders. I'm talking about the kid who sits behind you in Fisher 135 every day, jams his knees into your seat back, and sleeps through every single lecture. That's insomnia, if not borderline narcoleptic. <coughs> Dr. Galtney's study also found that 59% of students uh, around the college age identify themselves, self-identify themselves as night owls. Uh, these night owls recorded 40 minutes less of sleep per night as opposed to people like me, who are morning people. These night owls uh, reported their GPA to be an average of 2.72, whereas the morning people recorded a whopping high GPA of a 2.9. Um, <clears throat> out of the eight, over 1,800 students surveyed in, that, in Dr. Gulley's study, the average GPA was 2.77. So there's two things I get out of this. One, the people who got just 40 more minutes of sleep per night had a significantly higher GPA. That's a linear relationship. And two, this study was definitely not conducted at Michigan Tech. <coughs> Oops, I keep looking at my wrong thing, sorry. Um, so, drowsiness and lack of sleep, it affects, more than just your, um, it affects more than just your academic performance. It has been found to affect your driving, according to the British Medical Journals, your health, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, your social relationships, according to an independent study, a separate independent study by UNC Charlotte, as well as your risk-taking decisions by the Journal of Chronobiological International. Chronobiology International, excuse me. <clears throat> and you may think that risk-taking decisions is a little bit of a leap, but just last night, I was doing homework, preparing my script, these kinds of things, and I thought, oh, I still have my transport to do. I'll do it in the morning before class. Did I do that transport? Absolutely not. That was a risk I took, and it was not a good one because I was tired. <clears throat> so, well, basically what I'm getting at here is this is not a new idea. There's tons of, there's tons of uh, research out there on it. And my whole goal is just to repackage this information to something that's a little easier to digest. When I was sifting through all these research articles and things, it was full of medical jargon, jargon and terminology. It was hard to read, so I'm just trying to break it down into a little, uh, little easier and easier to understand for people like you and I. So what's the solution? I don't get enough sleep. What do I do? You sleep more. Duh. That's not, it's not like a big leap there. Hopefully you all follow me through that. But uh, here's something you didn't know. You may have poor sleep hygiene. And by sleep hygiene, I mean doing things in bed that you should be doing elsewhere, like watching Netflix, doing your homework, eating, reading, these things you could be doing at the kitchen table on a couch. What you're doing when you're doing these things and you have poor health hygiene, or sleep hygiene, excuse me, <coughs> is you're, you're training your body and your subconscious mind to, to stimulus in, in the actual mattress, in the bed itself. And when you train your body to, to look for these stimulus and things, when you go down to lay, lay down and sleep at night, your body's looking to solve that homework problem or catch the plot line in your Netflix show. So 
it's constantly, it's not being restful, it's being active and trying to figure out what the problem is. <coughs> um, another solution, perhaps, is giving, giving yourself a sleep schedule and actually sticking to it. Personally, myself, I like to go to bed by, or out of the books at least, by midnight, and I try to get at least eight hours of sleep, <coughs> or around eight hours of sleep. Um, so humans were naturally creatures of habit, where we walk the same routes to class every day. We sit in the same seats every day, even though there's no, uh, not a seating chart. So we naturally, either consciously or subconsciously, look for these consistencies and these patterns. Well, why wouldn't your body do the same thing when it comes to sleep? Stick to a sleep schedule, you'll get more sleep and better quality sleep. <coughs> and then one small little thing you can do, too, is uh, kind of give yourself decompress before you lay down at night. Personally, myself, my, my brain, I like to think of it as a big, inefficient diesel truck. It's uh, big and bulky inefficient, cumbersome, all these things. And for me to get started going on homework and things, I have to check my Snapchat stories, put in music, all these things. Once I get started, I can really start cranking out these homework assignments. But if I were to just to go from, straight from homework right to bed, my mind's still going to be going, my, my truck's going to be going down the road, and that, that would be like me going from homework to sleep is like going from the truck going from 55 to an e-brake stop. It's going to be grinding, vibrating, it's going to be mad, all these kinds of things. So. Give yourself time to decompress, let your truck break, cool down, change gears, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and this can be done with hand washing some dishes or taking a quick rinse in the shower. <clears throat> so, um, so keep that in mind next time you try and lay in bed. Don't, don't just go walk into your bedroom, walk in the door, and flop on your face into the bed. You know, take a quick rinse or do some dishes, this kind of stuff. Listen to a music or something. And uh, with that, sleep is a major key to success. Sleep is a major key to great final scores, great uh, exam scores. Sleep is, you could sleep your way to graduation, and you could also sleep your way to 60K a year. Thank you.